So uh, the way this session is going to work, we're going to have two goals. Um, the first is to provide a quick overview of the program, and that includes some of the lesson plans, some digital resources, and some program dates. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to have a Q&A portion where you can ask any question that comes to mind, and we'd love to help however we can. Um, but please note that while the Q&A is like technically at the end, if you have a question in the middle of the presentation, feel free to interrupt, just unmute yourself and ask, or you could type in the chat. Brian so kindly volunteered to monitor the chat for us today. So he'll be able to send me your questions. All right, ready to get started? Woohoo, let's kick this off. So, I just want to go through the program a little bit with you guys, just a quick overview so that we're all on the same page. When you registered for Kid Governor this year, you chose one of two ways to participate, um, either nominating and voting or voting only. Um, is anyone here nominating a candidate this year? Yeah, all right, that'll be a lot of fun. Cool, and are anybody, is anybody voting only? No. Oh, you're nominating Kathleen, all right, noted. All right, so it looks like the majority of us today are nominating and voting. That's my favorite way to participate. So I'm glad that you guys are nominating. It's gonna be a lot of fun for you and the kids. Um, so the names are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just go over them just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Nominating and voting classes are the ones who submit a potential candidate to, to run for kid governor in the election. And voting only classes, of course, only vote in the election. Both uh, classes get a chance to vote. Um, oh, Tara, you'd like to nominate but haven't done it before. So if you hear the program, like the presentation today and get inspired, you could change your registration to nominating at any time. So just let us know, send me or Brian an email and we'll update your registration form. Um, so both classes vote in the election and both classes get the same core lessons. Um, the lessons go over things like the three branches of government, what a governor is, um, leadership, and, and then eventually lessons to go along with voting in the election itself, like how to analyze a video, what you're looking for in a candidate, things like that. History of voting rights as well is one of the core lessons. Um, but then the nominating and voting groups, you guys get extra lessons, which go through things like how to decide on a platform and do good research and um, develop a three-point plan and uh, create a video. So the nominating and voting classes have a little bit of extra lessons in order to accommodate the extra tasks that you have in the nominating process. Um, all of these lesson plans can be found on the Connecticut Kid Governor website as well as our Google Shared Drive. And the Google Shared Drive is really cool because there's other resources there besides just the lesson plans themselves. So we can go over what those look like and where you can find everything on Google. Um, so in when you registered for Kid Governor, you guys got access to the Google Drive. Um, if you're not familiar with Google Drive, it's like a digital way to store and share files with each other. So that's what you have access to upon registration. Um, in order to access the shared drive, you can visit the website at the bottom of the screen, or if you go to the Google Drive homepage, it's in, it's, you can see it at a menu option on the left-hand side of the screen. It's called shared drives, or you can just go to drive.google.com slash drive slash shared dash drives. <laughs> it is a mouthful to say, but the link is right there for you, and it's easy to navigate and click through Google as well. So I'm going to bring up Google Drive itself and kind of show you how to run through and, and find the resources you need. So this is the home screen of the shared drive. And you'll see there's, it's organized into a lot of lovely folders for your convenience. So if you're looking for a specific lesson, what you do is you'd go to your folder for how your class is participating. You'll see that there's the nominating and voting folder and the voting only folder. So since a lot of us are nominating and voting, voting I'll go into that folder. So you click that folder and then each lesson has its own folder inside the folder. Each lesson is organized further into subfolders. So let's say I'm starting off, I'm teaching lesson one, I found my classes folder and now I'm going to click what lesson I want to teach. I'm going to click lesson one, introducing Connecticut's three branches of state government. This is where all of the materials for lesson one can be found and they're organized even more for you. Um, there are PDF versions of the lesson plan itself and also the worksheets that go along with the respective lesson. There are Google versions of all of the lesson activities 
So if you're a Google Classroom user, this is gonna be a great stop for you to visit. There's Google Forms versions and Google Slides versions. However, you'd like to utilize Google Classroom for your class, we try to offer a resource for you. Um, there are also select lessons that come with Bitmoji classrooms, and I'll get into that a bit later, but that's another resource available to you. And also this fifth folder, which I'll also dive a little deeper in with you, is called additional activities and resources. So besides the core components of the lessons, the worksheets, the actual plan, um, these are all the fun extra stuff that you might want to peruse as you plan your lesson. So I'm going to click that to show you some of the things that are available for lesson one in particular. So in the additional activities folder, there are different resources for different lessons. Lesson, sometimes there'll be videos for you to show the students. For example, the three branches lesson, lesson one, has different videos from e different executive officials and they explain each role of each branch of government. So it's really cool because you have real officials working in that branch explaining what the branch is and their role. So we find those really awesome uh, for, the class for classroom use. A lot of the lessons also have teacher presentations. So if you're teaching the lesson and you just want a slideshow for visuals and whatnot, that could be found here as well. And then every lesson has a Flipgrid prompt. And if you're not familiar with Flipgrid, it's like a video uh, website where students can up record and upload private videos. And this allows them to reflect. So we'll provide a prompt for each lesson and the students will be able to answer that prompt in video form. And it can be used as like an exit ticket as the students think about what they've learned. Um, so those can be found in the additional activities slash resources for each lesson. Does anyone have questions so far about the resources available? or how to find them? Yes, are you there? Oh, uh, Tara, well, I, I'm, I think you connected to the audio. Hello, welcome. I hope you can hear me now. Uh, yes. Great. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go back then because I wanna go over the other things that you might find. Um, so, my bad, let me go back to the Google Drive really quick. So in the additional resources folder, you have all of these options, but for select lessons, there are also different resources. For example, um, lessons one, two, and five have Bitmoji classrooms for your uh, for your use. You can submit, you can send these to students and have them click and, and go through all the materials and learn kind of about the lesson independently, or you can project the slides um, and go through the lessons with the class all together. You can really set it up however you want. Um, and kids really like it because you can click through all of the different uh, it, visuals in the, in the um, presentation, and it'll bring you to different links to learn a little bit more. For example, if you click on Makai's picture in this, it'll bring you to our uh, Connecticut's Kid Governor website. That's all about Makai and his platform and things like that. So it's really engaging for students because they get to click around and learn a little bit more and engage with the content in the individual different ways. It's a lot of fun. Um, each lesson additionally on the lesson homepage, oops, each lesson additionally has a video introduction to the lesson, which is a great way to launch each lesson. It kind of explains what the lesson's gonna be about and what the kids are gonna be learning about. So it's helpful for the students to get them excited about the lesson of the day and also helpful for you to orient yourself with the lesson objectives and everything like that. Um, any questions about those additional resources that are available to you? All right. And let me keep on going. In addition to all the digital resources, um, we also offer physical resources in the form of voting kits. Um, so each year, the first 300 classes who sign up are mailed a voting kit. And uh, they'll be mailed to you at the end of October, just in time for election week. And um, they have a lot of fun things to help you and the students get really excited about voting. For example, each kit this year will come with a mini voting booth, which is like those cardboard trifold privacy shields um, where the students can cast their ballots with privacy and have their own little voting area. Um, I voted for Connecticut's Kid Governor stickers to, you know, add to the authentic election experience. Um, printed ballots that are designed based on the real Connecticut ballots. So you, you'll receive printed versions of those with your voting kit. Um, pencils for every student to cast their ballot and keep 
as a fun memoriam. Um, Connecticut's kid governor pins, balloons to make your polling place fun and exciting, and one copy of a civics book. And last year, the civics book was called Say Something. And this year, um, the book will be a surprise. It changes every year. So it'll be a fun to unbox. Um, so again, look out for these in about a month, just in time for the statewide election. I also want to mention one thing while we're talking about voting, because um, at our previous session, some teachers had questions about voting. Um, the on this week of the, on the day that you guys vote in the statewide election, you can use the paper ballots, but we at governor headquarters do not need the paper ballots. We'll send you a separate digital form for you to compile the results and send them to us. So the paper ballots are to make it authentic and fun for the students, but we receive the results digitally and we'll send you all the information you need about that as election week approaches. Any questions about voting kits? All right, then let's move on to the program dates for this year. So um, these are the important dates for you to remember. A lot of the dates are particularly important for the nominating and voting classes because they have like the deadlines and stuff. Um, if you're nominating and voting, we recommend starting your classes this coming Monday, October 3rd, just that you have enough time to really dig into the material with the students and make sure they have enough time to create their platforms and their videos. And if you host a primary election at your school to submit your final candidate, that gives you enough time for that as well. Um, on October 27th, at the end of the month, the final video and entry form for your school's nomination for the final student are due then. Um, and if you're just voting only, we recommend starting your toolkit lessons on October 31st. Um, and then the statewide election begins on November 7th. So the election lasts about a week to give every teacher enough flexibility for fitting it into their schedules. You can vote on any day from the 7th to the 15th, but November 15th is the final day of the statewide election and that's when votes are due. And then once we tabulate all the votes, um, we'll announce the kid governor winner um, either November 21st, 22nd, or 23rd. We'll coordinate with the school of the winning candidate uh, for finalizing a date for that. And then the inauguration, which everyone is invited to watch on live stream, it will be on January 20th of 2023. And that was my quick overview 